Hello and welcome again to our video in this series of quantitative methods for business. And this video will be looking at the seasonality analysis and forecasting methods. In our video in this series, we looked at the time series analysis, namely we looked at the moving average, weighted moving average, and exponential smoothing. As we know, time series forecasting involves looking at the trend uh, of data over a series of time, and that could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, and so on. But sometimes recurring variation at certain periods, let's say month or quarter, in a year make a seasonal adjustment in time series forecast necessary. Because we can look at uh, the season, as we said, could be month or quarter or season like fall, winter, summer, and see if in one of this season there's higher or lower sale than other seasons. So analyzing time series data in monthly or quarterly terms usually make it makes it easy to spot seasonal pattern. So in seasonality analysis we're going to look at the seasonal index which is defined as the ratio of the average value of an item in a season to the overall annual average value for each season. So for this particular example, let's look at our example. Here we have the demand for a certain product for two years in a row based on monthly calculation. So in seasonality analysis, first we have to calculate the overall average for the monthly demand. And that is the average for all the data for the observation that we have. So we're going to go average function, which is going to add all these values, okay, and divide by 24. So the overall average is 94. Our next step is to calculate the seasonal ratio, which is the ratio for each month. Here the season is month. If you're doing quarterly, the season will be quarter. Or, so we're going to calculate the seasonal ratio for each month. And this is done by taking the value, the observation for each month, divided by the overall average, which is 94. So since I'm going to repeat this statement, I'm going to press F4 to make D2 absolute reference. Okay. And then I will simply drag it. So this will give me the seasonal ratio for each month. Now we can find the seasonal index. And here the seasonal index is for each season. And as we said, in our case, the month is the season. So I need to find the average of well, the seasonal index for January by finding the average for January. I have only two months here for January because I have only two years. But if you have three or four years, you add all the seasonal ratio for January and you divide by the number of ratio that you have. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take the average of E2 and E14, okay, which is this one here and the one here. So this is the seasonal index for January. I can repeat that and I will use just a different formula to show you that you don't need to use the average. So you're going to select February plus the seasonal index for this February, and we're going to divide by 2. And we can simply now drag to fill in the rest of the seasonal index. So what does this seasonal index mean? The seasonal index here represents for each month, which is the season, the demand. We look at the values here, and if the value is less than 1, any seasonal index less than 1, that means for that month, the demand is below average. 
seasonal index greater than one, as in April, May, June, and July, and August, that means seasonal index or the demand for that month for that season is above average. So to give you a quick example, if we, if we expect the average demand for your third year, the average, to be let's say 100 items, the average, then if we multiply each seasonal index by 100, that means what? Just an example, if I take this and multiply it by 100, which is the average demand for the third year, okay? And we'll repeat it here. And let's get rid of these decimal places because it's product. So this tells me that January's demand is 96. The expected, the forecasted, sorry, the forecasted demand for January of the third year is 96, which is below the average. The same for February and March. In April, I expect the demand to be above average because I'm expecting, forecasting 106. Here it's 131. So this will give me an idea of what to expect in terms of sale, how much to order, how much to stock on a monthly basis instead of just looking at the overall. And this is what we call seasonality analysis. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my video, to my YouTube channel and look for other videos on quantitative analysis, namely the multiplicative decomposition, which is complex steps in forecasting method. I'm going to show you how to do all that in Excel. So look for that video. Thank you. Have a great day.